A Minnesota woman is facing a murder charge after she allegedly an elderly man and an alleged accomplice is accused of cleaning up the crime scene and hiding the body. According to a Wednesday, July 24th press release from the Dakota County Attorney's Office, several witnesses who spoke with local police in Burnsville, Minnesota stated that Josephine Powers, age 25, shot 70-year-old Michael Rossio in the head. Powers first reported the herself on July 18th, telling officers that on July 9th, while her father was away on a two-week vacation, a man referred to in court documents as witness number four had shot Rossio. Despite Powers' initial report, authorities allege that she and Rossio had an argument that led to Powers throwing things at him before finally him. In a criminal complaint filed on Wednesday, authorities stated that a witness alleged that she, quote, freaked out and ran around the house before calling in for help to clean up. Days after Rocio's alleged murder, the attorney's office added Powers and an unnamed friend, identified only as Mike in court documents, asked a man named Christopher Hawkins to help her, quote, move a package from her home in exchange for a pickup truck. After Hawkins agreed to help and arrived at Powers' suburban Minneapolis home, he saw a splattered around in what he believed to be body wrapped in garbage bags and a rug. Quote, Powers told him a guy with her and she could not take it anymore. So she shot him. Powers told him she shot the guy with a pistol that had been given to her by a friend who was present when the happened. Hawkins then took the body to a shed in Minneapolis. When Powers' father arrived back at the home several days later, he told police that he saw what he believed to be brown paint splattered across the walls and saw, quote, a tall white male in his house wearing a hazmat suit who was cleaning up the brown paint and removing portions of the carpet from the basement floor. On a different day, Powers' father also detected an odor of bleach and ammonia in the house. And one of Powers' friends later told him what had transpired while he was away. Police later located Hawkins' shed and searched it, finding Rocio's remains inside of a gray plastic container. An autopsy revealed that the cause of death was a single wound to the head, and the manner of death was ruled a homicide. Hawkins is currently being held at the Hennepin County Jail in another case. Powers has been charged with second degree intentional murder and her bail was set at $1 million. She is next set to appear in court August 1st. One of the craziest things is that they said that this woman is 24. I would have thought that she was technically a lot older, uh, but I was obviously wrong. And then on top of that, to think that the fact that you have a 24 year old deciding to be so unstable, emotionally uh you know not leveled and getting into an argument with somebody who is an elder in the community and over such a simple argument decided oh well let me go out here and just get a weapon and uh, do what i do best like i said this is something that wasn't on a whim this wasn't something that the person it was just like a thought and they just went directly with it this was something that they've more than likely plotted before. This is something that they've gone over time and time again in their mind to try to figure out how it is or the perfect reason or the perfect excuse or however it is that people want to give a justification as to why it is that they do the actions that they do. That's what she did. She was like, hey, it was over an argument. Yeah, th th this guy just kept messing with me. She, she, the, the way you would think that she portrayed this was as if it was somebody her age that was bothering her and pestering her um, about trying to go on a date or trying to get her number. And the person was just being egregious. They were being abrasive. They were harassing. And, you know, it got to the point where, you know, she didn't know what was going to take place and she decided she needed to defend herself. But again, that is not what we are dealing with here at this moment in time. And then on top of that, the idiot, the 100 percent idiot, I'm sorry, idiots that decided that they were going to be accessories to this crime. All of y'all are stupid. All of y'all are stupid. 
I'm not I'm not sure where we are at this moment in time where people are looking at a face card and they're like, yeah, that's something that I'm going to, you know, help commit a crime for. Like, what is going on? Like what like what what is going on? I need people to be way more selective (laughs) when it is that they want to dive on the deep end and uh, do something that chances are they're not going to come back from. This was not worth it at all. This was not worth it at all. And then the other thing of the one guy came through to help and he was offered a truck. I'm not sure if if that was the, the actual deal or not. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if something else was offered and they're just using a truck as a substitute because they don't want to say what the real deal actually was. But any which way, that was a stupid deal. That was that was a bad deal. And more than likely, that truck was a lemon, hoopty, jalopy, whatever you want to sit up there and call it. It was not worth this at all. And then you're going to decide to come clean after you already seen what you've seen. My sir, you're an accessory. You, you, you just told on yourself. You came there in order to help her with the crime scene. You, you are an accessory. You're snitching on yourself. Crazy. This is madness. This is madness. If you were going to do all that, then, you know, you might as well just point blank, just go directly to the police. 100 percent don't don't you know tell the father or nobody just go directly to the police that's all you do <laughs> just go go directly to the police and let them you know situate the whole thing if you're going to do it like i said it's crazy dad was like yeah you know i came back home from a long vacation and uh, i see this tall white guy and it's crazy how that's the description i i, I would have thought that the father would have said i saw this Tall guy in my house, and uh, he was in a hazmat suit cleaning up. Uh, he said, "Tall white guy." I'm like, "Wait a minute, that's that's not you. You normally don't know who the criminal is because they make sure to leave that out. They'll just sit up there and say, "Guy, <laughs> six foot one." That that's normally how uh, these things are written. But for them to actually put that in there, that's crazy. And I can sit up there and tell you they didn't do that because they know that they have black readers. Uh, more than likely, their father actually said that, and I'm like, "Wow." I need to know who her father is. <laughs> so, I'm just going to be real. I need to know who her father is. Uh, maybe there needs to be some some DNA testing done or something, because that is not a normal uh, description at all. That's, that's normal of what you would hear uh, some black people say. They they would give a description and a color of what you are and, and, and the religion as well, too, if they even know what it is. Um, but anyways, like I said before, this is crazy this is a hundred percent crazy and again these are the things that they tend not to want to talk about when it deals with their own communities uh when they have you know these types of things uh take place in between one another and they want to make sure to give you and throw stories directly up there that will portray them as holier than thou and then they will portray you know other indigenous sectors of people um as criminals as vagabonds, vagrants, you know, anything negative directly under the sun. It's crazy how that works out. But yet consistently and continuously in their own communities, these are the types of things that go on daily, literally. But they refuse to talk about it. They refuse to highlight it. They want to showcase and talk about everybody else versus actually fixing home, fixing their front yard and their backyard. Right. Instead of painting their house and making sure everything is everything, they want to focus in on what the Joneses or the Stevens or the Johnsons are doing. It's crazy to me. And people wonder why it is that you have America um, as messed up as it is at this moment in time. This is why this is one of the great many top five reasons why. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video and everything that's in the comment description below. And as always, peace, love, and stay tuned for the next video.